The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the De uh, January, not December, but the January 28th edition of today's Trader's Edge show. Of course, this is Taco Tuesday. Great to be with you. Hope everybody's having a great day out there. Currently, we've got the uh, Dow up 210 points. All the indices are pointing green. We're going to go ahead and rip these markets apart, take a look at what levels we ought to be looking at at today's uh, closeout here. They'll be important to help us um, at least add to the probability of what tomorrow's action might be. But right now, we've got the Dow up 210, S&P 31, NASDAQ 100 is up 123 points. Of course, I would love to hear from you. And the easiest way to do that is to give us a call at 877-927-6648. If you can't call in, well, we've got you covered there. You can always send me an email. That would be at steve at tfnn.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, it'd be great if you could send those messages in early. That way, by the time you send it and goes to the ISP, gets to my cell phone here, I'll be able to get that question before the show and answer it uh, so um, and of course inside our tiger's den well any ping will do there so let's go ahead and take a look at these markets out here of course this is uh, taco Tuesday terrific Tuesday January the 28th out there I'm Steve Rhodes this is of course tiger financial news network welcome to the show so let's go immediately and take a look let's go right into our first question out here teriyaki tuesday not too bad as well first one coming in from tim m tim writes and he says hey steve would you would a close above the bottom of the taz box today for the es mini diminish the chances of a further retracement was hoping to go short but not so fast so now when you say a further retracement Geez, I don't know, Tim, are you referring to a further retracement lower, um, retracement higher to sell into the rally? I don't know. But let's just go take a look at you. You, you pose an excellent question, and, and we can go take a look at the charts and answer the question for you. So let's go do that. Let me go here. There's a chart out here. As it turns out, I happen to share this with subscribers this morning. So I just have to find where did I put it here? It should be like right here where it should be really right here. Where is it? Where is it? I guess it's not around the PTRs. Son of a gun. Hold on. Give me one second here because I've got it. There we go. Task profiles daily. It's got to be this one. There we go. OK, so what Tim's question is, right? So we spent a little bit of time yesterday and we should always spend every morning understanding where support and resistance is. Can you imagine? We got the Super Bowl. I mean, uh, be played here on uh, Sunday, uh, just, uh, you know, about 40 minutes down the uh, street, 45, uh, about an hour down the street. Um, but uh, can you imagine coaching the uh, Super Bowl and not really understanding where your players, where your supporter resistance is, so to speak? Oh, we got to take a look at the charts, son of a gun. No. There we go. OK, this is going to be helpful to you. Thank you. Thank you, my wingman in the studio. So now we're taking a look at the ES Mini. This is the daily time frame out here. And what took place yesterday was that we saw a break of support. And support being, so we spent a lot of time yesterday to take a look at support. We look at our daily, our weekly, our monthly profiles. We also can take a look at our TD9 count breakout levels out there. Um, we can look at Stevie's uh, red or green line, the oscillator and change line. Those are our levels of support and resistance. Now, what Tim's question is, is if the ES Mini today closes above 3268.50, on my screen, it says 32.6843. Folks, the ES Mini cannot trade to that. It trades in quarters, all right? And don't, and don't ever use the ES Mini as a round number object out there. It trades in quarters. You've got a 25% chance. Is that 20? Yeah, 25% chance that it's going to be a round number out there. But what I want you to 32.6850, if there's a close below that, then what we have is a second close below support. However, if there's a close below above that level, which Tim is asking, I think he's asking, will the ES Mini trade higher? Well, take a look at some examples here. If we go back and just take a look at the last time we saw a close below bottom of a box was on December the 3rd. What took place on the next session? 
Well, price got back inside the range, closed back inside the box, and then price went up and tested the high. It actually took out the high. So there's, a, there's an example of a close below. Here's an example of a close below a new box. This is on the trading day of October the 8th. The following day, price did test and reject it, but then the day after, darn it, if price didn't just sneak back into the profile, where did it head to? Right, it couldn't bust out the lows. It was a false break or a knee-jerk reaction, however, whatever language you want to use out there, and price went right back up to the top. Uh, instead, what we should see, if this is a real break, a real break of support heading to lower prices, much more like the action that we see back here on August 1st of 2018, 2019. You get a close below. The very next day, you get some follow through. And then, of course, we saw a lower price, uh, which lasted for a couple of days out there. And then we saw a bit of a consolidation. So, Tim, the answer to your question is goes like this. If the ES Mini closes above the bottom of its profile out there, that's 3268.50, then that suggests a continued move higher tomorrow. Now, will resistance be 3291 or 3306? I don't know the answer to that. The other level to be watching for. So, if we take a look at the, uh, if we took a look at Stevie's green line, well, shoot, that is above the daily profile. I'd be at 3316. It's not that price can't get up there, but there's some other levels of resistance. So, Tim, you're asking where is it that you should go short? And I can give you basically two numbers out here. First to close above that 3268 level should take price up to 3291 to 3306. Now that's in trade in the ES Mini, right? So that you can go ahead, you can set up that trade, you can uh, trade that overnight. If you're going to try to coordinate that with an ETF, well, I guess you can do it through some of uh, TD Ameritrade's ETFs that will trade around the clock. I'm not sure what the liquidity is in those vehicles and what your entry price would be, at least in the yes mini, you can sell right to the tick. You just simply identify that level out there. So, Tim, I hope that answers your question out there. And uh, thanks so much for writing in. Our next question out here, and we'll get to the markets, but uh, you're, you're kind of getting the gist out here. I think Tim just kind of nailed it. But uh, Tom writes in, so we got a Tim and Tom show. And Tom writes in, he says, can you give me your take on dust? the inverse of the uh, GDX. I am in a long trade and wondering if you should go ahead and buy some more. So let's go take a look at uh, Dusty. Dusty Rhodes, that is. And, uh, of course, that's not who it was, but, you know, I, I did garner that nickname. Kind of hard not to, right, as a, a kid with the last name Rhodes. So we want to go take a look at Dust. So uh, if we're just simply going to look at Dust, I'm going to give you the uh, profile levels out here. Um, we're going to look at more than that to answer your question, Tom. But with regard to dust, what it has done today, uh, if we're just going to use dust as our proxy uh, in the market profiles, and what's taken place today is price ran right into resistance. That would be $6.08. So in your case, Tom, I, I think I get a feel, a little bit of a feel for the type of trader that you are. I'd be sitting on that trigger, potentially that trigger, Today, I'd, I'd be having a tight stop. I believe that's kind of the way that you trade out there, and price ran into resistance. I don't know if that's the case for the GDX. We'll go take a look at that because, in essence, really, that's what dust is feeding off of the GDX. And, of course, the GDX is feeding off of gold, so we really need to take a look at those. And I'm sure others have questions about that. So we're going to do that when we get back from this break. We're going to go take a look at the GDX for Tom. And, of course, I want to hear from you. Steve Roach with TFNA. We'll be right back. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, TAS understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the TAS Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. 
Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's up 212, S&P 32. Uh, we're going to go back out to the uh, question, uh, which is uh, what Tom wants us to take a look at dust. We took a brief peek at dust, but now I pulled up the GDX. And the GDX is going to give us uh, better information. Dust is a, a triple ETF inverse of the uh, GDX. And so, you know, its profile levels, I always consider those to be somewhat suspect out here. I'd rather rely upon the uh, one to one. Uh, which is the GDX, and Tom is asking, hey, is now the time to add? So, and you're going to see here, we're going to get two different messages, right? On dust, we saw that price was running right into resistance at the top of its daily profile. And that was saying, okay, if you can't bust it out, and we don't know if it will, but by the end of the day, if there was not a close above that, well, then that would be saying that a resistance is held. Now, in the case of GDX, what we can see is price is actually trading below support or one of its support levels, uh, that being the bottom of its daily profile, 28.48. So, Tom, um, I would say, you know, you're looking to add to it. Um, you know, one day's close below the bottom market profiles, while Stevie always likes at least a two-bar close. So, you know, do you add now? I don't know. Let's go take a look at, you know, some other influencing factors that you would want to consider, and that would really be gold. So let's go take a look at Goldilocks, see what it's doing. Now, in the case of gold, what we know is we know we've got a nice uh, wave number seven top out here. That's letter G. We also know that yesterday uh, in that move higher, it was beginning to form a Rhodes momentum indicator signal out here. Now, the problem is, it's not really a problem. We don't have a bearish reversal candle. And so I don't have a secondary topping signal inside the uh, gold contract, uh, at least just yet. But what we also see is that price inside the gold contract is testing Stevie's green line. That's 1572.10 out there. If price closes below that level, then Tom, I would say, okay, I could see where you would consider adding to your dust position. However, you probably see exactly what I see too. What is that? Look at this little, and this is where it gets a little bit more tricky, I would say. Look at all of the higher lows that the gold contract has made out here, Tom. Now, granted, 
Um, today, it looks like we're going to have a close below the low of yesterday. So that could be a factor that suggests lower lows out here. But I, I, I can't see you getting carried away just yet on this trade here. I, I just, I, you know, I, I, yes, look, the golds move higher to a certain extent for the most part. It's really been geopolitical at this stage. But, you know, I, uh, Tom, I mean, here, I, I just pose the question to you. Do you trust that everything you're reading in the media with regard, and we, can, we know yesterday's reaction and then Friday's reaction to the, uh, uh, to the issues over in China. So now, do you believe that the information that we are receiving from China is is all out there, totally transparent. It's in fact, it's in fact, it's it's aggressive. They're give they're 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 making it even worse than it is just to you know try to rein things in. If if you believe that, then okay, maybe. But I, I, what if they're not, and things are actually worse? Than they are, and we've seen how the markets, or we believe we've seen how the markets have responded to that, and that is including gold. And so, in geopolitical senses, it's really hard to be short gold. Yeah, I can have a bearish outlook, but uh, uh, other than if you're trading the actual futures contract, do you really want to step in front of that kind of a freight train out there? So, I hope that helps you out. I know we went beyond uh, dust, but really, we didn't because we really needed to consider all of those things out there. So I hope that that helps you out. Now, let's go take a look at just the general markets out here uh, for the next couple of minutes. Take a look at things to look at. Let's go look at the um, let's go look at the actual cash indices out here. Uh, let's spend a little time there. Now, I did the uh, 1 p.m. update. I'll do the I'll share with you what we discussed there and the, the importance of it. Now, one of the things that we were looking at was the uh, let me get it here. It was a spot volatility index. Now, right now, it's lower by 11.25%. If you look at the bottom panel of my screen out there, you're going to see a, a two yellow lines, one at 10%, plus 10%, one at minus 10% out there. Now, what those mean, you're looking, because it's a uh, line chart, it's really just looking at closes. The blue arrows and green arrows on my chart are referencing days when there's a one-day rate of change above 10%. And the, those are the blue arrows. The so green arrows are when there's a one-day rate of change below minus 10% or minus 10% or less out there. And right now, that is what we have. Now, if you take a look at uh, green arrows out here, what they typically indicate, I'll just simply call them initiation move signals out here. And that would suggest um, not a down day tomorrow. Not that you can't have that. But not a significant down day tomorrow. And, and the likelihood and the very possibility that it's an initiation to move to higher price. Now, does it work all the time? No. They still don't have that tool that works all the time. But it works enough. It's not a coin toss. This tool is not a coin toss. It puts the odds in your favor out here. So if there is a one-day rate of change today below minus 10%, it's suggesting that we're going to see, we're not going to see some kibosh to the downside tomorrow. And more likely than not, we're going to see a continuation of this move. Now, we put that together. We were looking at the ES Mini, I believe, earlier with Tim. So that just adds to the ES Mini. Hey, if you close back above the bottom of that profile, then it was a false breakout to the downside out there. And then I put that together here with the S&P 500 specifically. Many people don't really access the ES Mini, but you do have access, certainly or should, to the S&P 500. And its number is 32.6066. That was the TD9 count breakout level. The price did close below. If the S&P closed below 32.60.66, that's suggesting that we're going to see price head down to lower levels. And that next lower level inside the cash indice is 31.26. But right now, price is above the breakout level. Again, in other words, this was a uh, potentially the buy the dip. Now, if we take a look at the S&P cash different than the ES mini chart out here, and in the S&P cash, you can see that Stevie's green line is 33.17. I would suggest to you that in that area is where the counter trend rally, if this is just a counter trend rally, would end. A close above that, and we're back to the new all-time highs. Well, we won't be right back to them, but it would suggest that, in fact, that would be the likely scenario. Now, the other level to watch and this is important because we have mixed signals out here. Mixed signals from the Dow. The Dow also closed below its breakout level, 28, 789, 10. And in essence, price has tested and rejected that level. So the Dow, the Dow is still in a bearish operation. 
It would need to close today above 28, 789, 10. Can the Dow take things lower? Yes. The bigger and more important aspect of the Dow chart or what we're looking at here, and if there is a close blow 28, 789, 10, what it's signaling to you and I is that international money is not flowing into the Dow. And that's always a bad thing for the markets because we lose one of our big liquidity um, options for it. You see, the Dow is really the, even though you, maybe you don't own the Dow, a lot of international and big uh, uh, big uh, funds most certainly do. In international money, they take a look at the uh, Dow as the trophy horse, so to speak. So watch the 28, 7, 80, 9, 10. The re, you know, uh, the, what's going to drive markets lower all the time is always a lack of liquidity, right? So you're looking for those types of things. So inside the NDX 100, you've got Apple, I believe, coming out with earnings after the uh, bell to uh, today. The NDX 100's got the topping pattern, wave number seven. That's letter G out here. But no breaks of any kind of support inside the NDX 100. None. Zero. Nada. Zippo. You know, if you can't bust support, well, you haven't changed your trend. We'll be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you're a trader in the market looking to find the path that leads to maximizing profits while decreasing risk, then now is a great time to try out Dave White's daily trading service, The Path of Least Resistance. Through the use of options and equity trades, Dave advises his subscribers on a daily basis of the current market conditions and what possible trade setups are on the horizon. The Path of Least Resistance is published every trading morning, often with updates intraday when initiating trades or closing out positions. Dave White has advised his clients of some outstanding winning options and equity trades in recent months, and now is a great time to try it out for yourself. New subscribers to the Path of Least Resistance receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the types of options and equity trades that are available by signing up for the Path of Least Resistance today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com and selecting the newsletter tab. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back. Uh, Dow's up 218. S&P is up 32. We're going to go out to uh, Philadelphia and speak with John. John, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you doing today? Steve, I'm doing very well. Thanks for taking the call. My pleasure, as always. And uh, we're going to discuss uh, uh, heating oil. 
Uh, why don't you tell the folks uh, what we're going to look at, how we can help you. Steve, um, you know my hypothesis since early October, uh, which has been the idea that crude oil under 50 for very long was unsustainable, frankly on, a, on account of the fact that um, U.S. oil production is very high cost, and if it remains below that price for too long, we'll uh, just see low price, curing low price with um, U.S. oil producers uh, in places like the Permian or the Bakken going out of business and pulling back production. Anyway, so that's a hypothesis. Uh, we've had this severe drop in the price of oil and its products, of course, the past two weeks on the, uh, <clears throat> the concerns over slackening global demand out of China in particular with this virus problem. Um, so oil has uh, cascaded lower, and it, qu it hasn't quite hit the lows of October, August, June. Interestingly, uh, as I was doing my chart work the past week, I noticed that heating oil, you know, one of the uh, two major products out of a cut of a barrel of oil, came down and actually broke the, um, the October and uh, June lows and already got all the way back to the December 2018 low. And uh, as you saw, I took a speculation just as a short-term trader uh, picking or speculating the possibility of a double low bottom forming. Um, and, and frankly, the only reason I'm uh, going after heating oil is just because of that earn and the potential double low bottom possibility. And, and frankly, that's just to try to get me back into getting confident about an oil, in, excuse me, a bottom in crude in uh, the CL contract. Anyway, so that's the background. I'm wondering, in doing your chart work and using all your tools, is there any set of parameters you can share with us that uh, we can use and rely upon in looking at the things very short term or looking at things short term over the next one, you know, five, ten days as uh, clues um, of a uh, bottom in heating oil, and I transfer that into crude oil itself. Okay, so uh, excellent. Uh, thank you for stating the question so well and so easily. And uh, so, folks, one of the charts that John is taking a look at is the weekly time frame. Uh, this is the uh, March contract. Is it the March contract, John, that's active right now for heating oil? That is, yes. Yeah, so we're taking a look at the March contract here. And one of the first things, so John is talking about a, a double bottom, basically. He's really referring to a, a retest of a prior swing point, as he mentioned it. It was the swing point low from December, the week that began December 24th, 2018. And what you can see is uh, so far this week, uh, that level has been tested. That was a buck 70, 1.7018 to be specific. And price so far has rejected it. Now, this is a weekly time frame chart. It's only Tuesday. Uh, we, know, we do know the price is below the uh, weekly profile. We also know that prices below the daily profiles out here. Uh, the 240-minute price has just gotten above. So John's asking here, are there any short-term signals to suggest that his entry into a long position in this uh, is starting to begin to see some type of uh, change in trend signal or resistance levels that would fail. And so the first one that you would be looking for, just kind of stepping down a little bit from weekly, daily, then go to a four-hour time frame, would be the top of that box. And so any close on a four-hour base, I believe that would be uh, two o'clock. So in less than 30 minutes here, if you see uh, heating oil uh, close above the top of that level, which is 1.7114, that is suggestive of a uh, of a change in trend because, in fact, if we pull back, we're just I'm out of curiosity. I don't know what we'll see, what we won't see, but we're just looking to see how often has uh, heating oil closed above the top of the 240-minute profile on the move down. There was a really small profile back in here uh, in the January 14th time frame, so small that. You kind of have to, in my opinion, have to discount it a, a tad out here. Uh, but really, this is the first, this this could be the first time. And then if you had follow through, that would, so you'd be getting a good signal, John, on the four-hour four hour time frame with regard to profiles. In the 60-minute, and I think you use a 60-minute chart uh, short-term 
to help confirm your patterns out here. Let's, in fact, pull over a different 16-minute chart now. Let's pull over my white background chart. It's got some of the roads, momentum indicator signals, our TD counts, things, uh, wave counts, things of that sort. And so on a 16-minute basis, John, uh, price was pushing lower, doing less relative energy. You got a piercing candle. Let me get a crosshair out here. We'll be able to maybe see it a little bit easier. That was at, um, looks like 1 o'clock yesterday afternoon uh, was when there was a signal of a potential bottom. Price just simply moved sideways, uh, sort of retested, uh, really did retest that level out there. Again, you had then you had a, another bullish reversal candle on the one-hour time frame chart, suggesting that at least buyers were trying to support that low that you were looking at out here. And now what's going on is we've seen over the past couple of hours, we've seen price break above a key resistance level, where it had last broken down on a 60-minute time frame using its TD9 counts out here. That was 1.7088. And now on this little pullback that we're seeing in this uh, one hour period here between 1 and 2 p.m., price is, has busted above that. It's now pulling back. And if it can stay above that, an old resistance level, potentially old resistance level, will become new support. If price closes below that, it doesn't mean that we haven't seen a, uh, a bottom. Price could easily pull back and test my uh, oscillator and change line. That's at about a buck sixty-eight. So the sixty-minute is giving you that bottom signal. And here, the two hundred forty-minute time frame chart, John. We looked at that with price trading above the uh, top of its uh, profile out there. Uh, this I've got as a, a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom as well. And then I've got uh, wave number seven, letter uh, G. So I see the bottoming patterns on the short-term time frame chart. On a daily time frame chart, I don't have anything out here to identify a uh, bottom. Uh, but you were simply using this as a trade to as a retest against the December lows out there. Now, you also mentioned oil. So let me pull that over here real quickly, and then we'll have about a minute to, you know, respond to any of your questions. Low, uh, oil, light sweet crude, is very likely targeting its breakout area, 51.76. This is a level that is held. It's a, a TD set up uh, a breakout area, the 5176 has been tested three times, three or four times here over the past many months, going back to June. And that should be a pretty key support level. It hasn't been tested, but, um, you know, whether price will get all the way down there or not, it's right near a support level. So that's what I see in trying to put all that together. Did that help you? Uh, yeah, immensely. Thank you. Uh, oh, okay. I'll just... Uh, as I uh, stack up all uh, the info you've mentioned, the uh, heating oil four-hour charts potentially moving above the top of a TAS profile, but uh, interestingly, having now moved above your um, oscillator, excuse me, yeah. oscillator on change line. Uh, yeah. I love that stuff. So uh, you answered all my questions. Uh, I'm going to continue bottom picking. Sounds great. Hey, John, always Excellent. good to talk to you. Thanks so much for uh, calling in, and uh, have a great day. Folks, we got Thanks the again. Dow. You bet, you bet. Dow is uh, trading up uh, 205 S&P 31. We'll be right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you'd like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. 
Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, uh, folks. Dow's up 216, S&P uh, uh, 32 points right now. Uh, let's go to our next question that came in. This one coming in from Craig. Craig uh, says, hey, Steve, any good potential resistance point on this bounce in uh, Lightspeed Crude for a good short down to the 51 area? So uh, if we just simply pull this daily chart back out here, Craig, for Lightspeed Crude, um, and I'll go take a look at profiles uh, with you, uh, the best area would be a test of Stevie's red line, which presently is printing out at 5671. If price bounces up to that level, it won't be 5670. It won't be 5671. But I would have to use my oscillator and change line right now. And this chart is the only chart that would provide us with a, uh, you know, a good, uh, a good potential resistance point. I don't know whether resistance will hold on this. You know, we can see that really, if you there's a, a large consolidation that's going on uh, here in Lightsweet Crude, Craig. And you can see the top. It's really well identified. It was where the TD setup nine count breakdown uh, level took place. And that's at 6306. There's been two moves up to that area. Both uh, have been rejected. Now, granted, there was a slight close for one day above that level. But then the follower two days later, that led to wave number seven. That's letter G. And that has since taken price down to support. And support, 51.76. Has price actually gotten down there? No. Now, look, if it doesn't get down there, because the other two, look, there's been, in essence, the first time down here was back in the August time frame, right? So just look at the chart here, August 7th. The next time that price came back, and, and when it couldn't, when it, even though it closed below it, the very next day it's right above. Really think about the opening segment that we did out there and how just breaking a key level of support on one day is not curtains, it's got to prove itself to you and I. Otherwise, it's just a one-hit wonder, and you're not going to get paid off on one-hit wonders out there. It just doesn't happen. And so in this case here, okay, with Lightsweet Crude, look at the uh, very next time that price came down here, October 3rd. October 3rd was a slightly higher low, but it still tested that level. Here's the third test out here. Third test is on the trading day of October 10th on the even higher low out here. Maybe this time price is not going to get back to that low. And you've got another higher low. Really suggesting, Craig, that yes, I mean, price is below Stevie's red line out here. But it really suggests that you're down towards the bottom of the consolidation until it proves itself to us otherwise. But right now, it's proof. It's that that's the bot. That's you're, you're so near support. And I just don't know that the reward risk is in it to um, for that counter trend move all the way to the back. I'd say odds favor more. If you can't bust them down, it'll try to bust them up. 
you know, and that could be another run up to the 63 level out there. So that's what I see right now uh, when I take a look at the uh, chart for Lightsweet Crude. Hector writes in, Hector and the fuel injectors. Hector loves Taco Tuesday. Now we got to go to, we got to go grab some tacos, maybe a Corona. Possibly a shot of tequila, but I don't think so. Uh, that, that, then you could, you know, one tequila, two tequila, three tequila, floor, you know, that song out there. So maybe we don't want to do that. But um, what, uh, what uh, Hector wants to look at is uh, SQ and Snap, if we have enough time. So let's go do this here. Let's pull up SQ and Snap. Let me pull over... Still working on the uh, the automated the overall automated tools, but really getting pretty close out here. But let's just uh, punch in uh, SQ. And your question here is, can you back up the truck? Uh, which is the better play, SQ or or Snap? Now, here's the daily time frame. The daily time frame we see a road momentum indicator bottom. That was really your time to step in out here. What do we have today? Uh, price, um, and I don't have any kind of topping signal. Uh, looks like maybe A to B equals CD patterns to the upside. That's what the daily is showing us out here. If I take a look at the uh, weekly time frame for uh, Square, I don't have a bottom pattern per se. But what we can see is that the last low was a higher low too. So maybe this is just simply trading in between the 55, 60 area, you know, up to about 80, 85, something like that. I don't see... You know, I don't see any, uh, I don't see anything bearish about the weekly time frame chart for the moment, which suggests higher price. The monthly's not going to give me a whole lot. Your other question was Snap. Which of the which of the two would be better out here? You know, and the, the answer to that would be it should like to see a bottom. We'll look at Snap here on the uh, monthly time frame. But TD set up nine count, road momentum indicator top. Uh, so on a monthly time frame, that's a positive uh, outcome. However, the weekly is saying I uh, price is moving higher, doing less relative energy. Uh, you've gotten into wave number seven. Uh, that was yes. Uh, that was last week out here. So that suggests caution. What about the daily time frame chart here for Snap? Certainly an A to B equals CD pattern that was completed. Uh, you got the bearish engulfing candle yesterday. Um, neither of these are back up your truck candidates. The back up your truck candidate. The easier back up your truck, Hector. And I'd love you to learn the, these patterns out here. Like you got wave number seven, a road momentum indicator bottom back in snap on a daily basis back in the October time frame. I'd rather you see those signals to do that back up your truck. Just the odds are going to favor you. So I hope that helps you out. And yeah, let's go grab a uh, let's go grab a, uh, a a good meal out there. Uh, I, I like I like the shrimp in, in the steak fajitas though, but it's got to be good steak, right? It, it, if it's not good steak, it's it's not worth eating out there. All right, so no other questions that we have, uh, folks. If you're inside the Tiger's Den and you've got something that you'd like me to go take a look at, uh, please let me know. Otherwise, I'll just simply uh, peruse around the uh, charts out here, see what it is that we see. Let's uh, begin by taking a look at uh, what? Oh, let's go take a look at hey, where are we trading? Where are the markets trading? Uh, in relationship to the 2019 highs out here. Now, in the very left-hand uh, uh, columns out here, you're going to see the equity futures contract. You're going to see the ES, the NQ, and the uh, Dow out here. And if we take a look at all three of those are trading above their 2019 high. Now, that's, it's, it's bullish still. More important, yesterday when we saw a couple closes below those levels, but they just simply haven't held. Now, it's different if we take a look at the New York Stock Exchange, Russell 2000, and the semiconductors. However, it's just the New York Stock Exchange and the Russell that are trading below their 2019 high. The semis are not. Take a look at the S&P cash. Different than the, S and the ES mini out here, but the S&P cash never closed below the 2019 high. The Dow did, but it's back above it. The NASDAQ composite never did as well. Now, gold is above that 2019 high. Again, uh, just going back to Tom's question, you know, should he pile on more inside of the dust trade? Uh, you trade above last year's high out there. It's not bearish. Yeah, we've got topping signals. Yes, yes, yes. But it, it's not like it's overly bearish, you know, where I would say, yeah, back up the truck, uh, as, uh, as Hector was asking as an example. Silver, well below that uh, the 2019 high, as are uh, Treasury bonds out there. So, okay, so that's interesting information. Let's go, I think it is. It, it's interesting to me. It's helpful to me. If this market were really bearish or if it does get really bearish, 
and you're going to see price first uh, trading below last year's highs out there. If we take a look at the New York Stock Exchange, well, we know that yesterday you and I talked about this. So we were discussing this chart as we were looking at the roads went to mitigator signals on the short-term time frames. We knew about the spot volatility index, one-day rate of change. We had said, hey, be careful because that just simply institutes or suggests some type of bounce or bottom out there. And then we said, hey, that New York Stock Exchange advanced decline oscillator, it was down below minus 150 yesterday. And we know that's an oversold reading. So this could be a counter trend rally. Or it could be just simply a knee jerk reaction yesterday and the day before. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, JDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN. Welcome back, uh, folks. I love that power trading hour out there. That's David White. He's coming up next, Tom O'Brien after that. Uh, so I believe Apple is out with earnings. Is it today, folks? Um, I believe that it is. And uh, so let's go see if there's some kind of tell inside of Apple. From taking a look at the charts, can you or I surmise how the market thinks, David, uh, tonight at 430, how the market might react? So uh, here, if we take a look at the longer term picture, the weekly and the daily charts out here, we can see that price is well above well above any kind of support levels, support levels or resistance levels, uh, th those being the top of their uh, profiles. Uh, the daily uh, we do have a profile that formed maybe a uh, half a dozen days ago or so. And uh, we can see that yesterday's move lower right into support. Never a break of support. Right to where the buy the dipsters would be. And they were at 305.16. And that held. 
Now, those buy the dipsters have been able to push price, in essence, up to resistance. The resistance would be the top of the profile. That number is 317.57. So the real question for you or I, if this is just a counter, is this? Is there any kind of topping pattern that's out there? And if so, then maybe this could just be a counter trend rally possibility. So let's go take a look at the daily time frame chart and see what we see out here. We see really two topping patterns, right? Well, I say right. You say, I don't know. What do you mean, right? Well, if we do the wave counts, that's the Chapman wave counts out here, from the uh, low on uh, December the 3rd out there, what you'll see is the actual high that came in was on wave number seven. Wave number seven, we know how the markets like to sing in the key of G. When we see those, well, it tells us of a potential change in trend or at least a potential top. Well, we got the potential top. Oh, the second pattern, the Rosemann Dim indicator signal. That was confirmed yesterday with the gap to the downside. But remember, whenever we get a topping signal, the first role of sellers that you or I are really trying to understand is, do they have the ability to bust through support? And the answer that you and I have is, no, they were not able to do that. So get to your conclusion, Steve-O, in the next 10 seconds. I don't have a conclusion. We can call this a uh, counter trend rally up into the top of that uh, box out there and the topping signal is still in play would i play some kind of put or call position going into earnings the answer would be no it's kind of true take care folks we'll see you tomorrow